Hi, my name is Christina Adams, and this is the place where we talk about God, Christianity, and life. Right now, I'd like to talk about Fox's Book of Martyrs and why it's a hard but a good book to read. So first off, Fox's Book of Martyrs was written by John Fox in, um, I think it was published in 1563, and it happened during the reign of uh, Mary I of England. And uh, it was it's basically a, a detail of the, the conflict between Catholics and Protestants and in, in England and just the different theological differences that they had uh, between them. But uh, the thing I really wanted to, to focus on, I mean, the, the history part of it, it is really interesting uh, to go into, but the thing I want to focus on today is how it, it actually catalogs the way people um, died during the, those, that time period. Uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, it starts with, uh, I think it starts with Stephen, and then it goes to James and uh, Peter and Paul. It kind of moves through history, um, Polycarp, and uh, it gets to um, the, the the present day of that time, which would be 15, uh, 1550 uh, through, well, I think it's 1553 through 15, uh, 1556, uh, I think. And, and it just, it, it, it basically records all of these different people and how they stood up for Christ and basically their, their last moments of life and what that actually looked like. Uh, and you know, because we, we have, we have the, the account of uh, Stephen and the account of James in uh, the book of Acts, but we don't really uh, talk as much on what happened with, with some of the others, especially outside of Peter and Paul. Like we probably know what happened with Peter and Paul, but uh, even beyond that, like, like uh, Andrew had some uh, very interesting uh, last lines when um, he was um, on trial. And I think so did Matthew and just this, some of the things that they said, some of the things that they stood up for and uh, just their, their boldness really in the face of, of uh, at that time, you know, really a horrible kind of death. And that's something that we just don't, we don't understand perhaps as much, uh, just the, the intense way that people had died in, in back in those times, like back in, in Rome, there, the uh, crucifixion was the primary way that you would just kill criminals and um, enemies of the state and slaves and you know anybody that you know was not a Roman citizen. If you were a Roman citizen, you'd have a little bit of a better death, you know, where you would be uh, beheaded. But uh, anybody else, you could be thrown to to uh, wild beasts to eat you. Uh, you could be lit on, you know, have uh, tar poured over you and then lit on fire. And uh, there was just a whole bunch of, of really kind of horrific deaths that happened. And the, the, throughout the course of, of uh, history, especially specifically in, in Europe, the, how people had handled capital punishment kind of changed a little bit as they saw, you know, like the ways that, that people were dying. And they, they, they found like, like during Fox's Book of, of Martyrs, a lot of people died by, uh, by being burnt at the stake. And that was not necessarily a very slow death. And uh, sometimes it was it was fairly quick and merciful, but sometimes it wasn't. And another way that they would be um, people would be killed would be by by drowning, which you know would fortunately be a faster faster kind of death. But it still wasn't. Um, I think that the the impact that it had on people then made them uh, shift to what they would consider perhaps more humane uh, ways of, of public execution, like like beheading uh, or hanging, or um, actually uh, the the guillotine. The guillotine's um, primary, the reason why it was primarily written was so that it would, or not written, but um, uh, created was so that it would be a humane form of death and, you know, it'd be quick. And, you know, like, like there, there was some accounts of, of people who had the, the ax and it took them a couple swings and they were like, oh, we don't want that anymore. We'll create the guillotine. It'll be quick, sharp and efficient. And uh, so then that, but then we've moved on from that to, to the ways that we have had uh, executions in the past. And we used to have hanging, which that used to be considered fairly merciful um, because it was supposed to be for really quick. Um, and um, we had, you know, the, the electric chair and uh, now we have lethal injection, uh, assuming that we <laughs> still have uh, capital punishment. Um, yeah. And I think we have it in some states still. But uh, you know, we've also had like firing squad. And so we, we've moved to faster and quicker um, public deaths. And so we don't have a lot of the, the kinds of, of deaths like, like crucifixion, uh, like they would have back in, in those days where people would, would be dying publicly for, for uh, a long period of time. And um, 
in Fox's Book of Martyrs specifically, that that kind of uh, more long, uh, prolonged kind of death, especially with being burnt at the stake, that was that was sort of a um, it, it was intended to be a warning to the public uh, and to tell them not to, hey, don't do these things. But the uh, the interesting thing about Fox's Book of Martyrs, even though it does basically record all these deaths, and I know like for some people that's that's a big problem with Fox's Book of Martyrs is that um, you don't want to you like reading about death is is really not not one of the most um, comforting I guess uh, kinds of of uh, topics to be reading about. But then at the same time, the the neat thing about Fox is Fox's Book of Martyrs is that he the whole time he's talking about how God interacts with us when we're in our final moments. And that's one of the things that I've always found really encouraging about Fox's Book of Martyrs is that you see people who are in their their last moments and you see whether or not God is still with them. And that that was one of the main things that uh, actually Athanasius talked about in uh, on the incarnation where he would say, you know, like 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 one of his big points is that Christ is a victor over death. And the way that you can know he's the victor over death is that the average person's no longer afraid of it. And this is what Athanasius said, like back in the day when people were being crucified, when they were being tossed to, to animals. And, um, you know, like when, you know, any manner of, of torture might be thought up um, for, for people that disagreed with the state. And he said, well, even you know, Athanasius said that even women are not afraid of those types of deaths. And, um, the reason was is because they knew back then that Christ he had defeated death completely and he was now in charge over what they might experience or might not experience and even more so that Christ was always with them even when they were facing death which is uh is just it is it is a really uh, to me it, that is is a comforting thought is to know that no matter what happens nothing is going to separate me from Christ and uh the, that I just go from being with Christ on earth to being with Christ in heaven. And that's, that's one of the things I do. I do really like about, um, learning about uh, how these people lived, how these people died. And there's, there's actually a a story in Fox's book of martyrs. There's a whole bunch of stories really where, uh, God did, uh, God was present with those people. Like there, there was a man who, uh, was on the rack and the people who were torturing him were surprised at how well he took it. And he said, well, there was a young man and he, he gave me sips of water and mopped my, my brow with a, a, a cool cloth. And it was so nice and refreshing that I didn't want it to stop. And they were just like, we just don't know what to do with that. Uh, but the, the fact is, is that that young man, either if it wasn't uh, God, it was someone that he sent. And so this, this person, then he didn't actually even experience a lot of the pain that they were trying to inflict because God was with him. Uh, there's another uh, story about uh, a man named Thomas Hawks in uh, 1555. And he um, had, he did not want his baby to be baptized. And uh, because of that, they uh, imprisoned him and um, there's a whole interrogation process. And then they decided that they were going to burn him at the stake. And his friends come up to him and they say to him, you know, we're, we're afraid that we're not going to be able to, to stand up and, and be willing to die for this. And so we would like you to give us a, some kind of sign. And so Thomas Hawk said, okay. And, uh, he was burnt at the stake and they thought that he was dead. His friends are all in the crowd. They're watching and he hasn't moved in a long time. And, and his, his body has been, you know, transformed by, by the fire. And then at the moment when they thought, they thought for sure he had been dead for some time, but he raises his hands and he claps them three times. And then it is, it is in that moment that he died. And he was supposed to, uh, give them that sign if, if the pain that he felt was endurable and if he felt like God was with him the whole time. And so that's just a really neat, uh, kind of story that we just really don't hear or talk about as, as often that God is with us and that, uh, and, and here's here's an, another interesting thing is that we can hear how people died back in the early church days and we can hear how people died in Fox Fox's day and we can hear how people die today and we can think like I can't handle uh, that kind of, of death or I can't handle having someone else have you know, have that kind of death but the thing is is that like we we actually ourselves God gives us grace for whatever it is that we're going to go through but he doesn't give us grace for what other people haven't gone through. And so we may not have 
the grace to handle the kinds of things that that Fox's Book of Martyrs, uh, the people that were in that book, had to had to face. But they did because they were the ones that had to face it. And so we're the ones, you know, God is going to give us the grace for whatever we may have to face. And because he's giving us the grace when we when we get there, we we don't actually have to worry about about any of it, which is is just is really neat to, to think about how how Christ uh, does care for us uh, throughout all of life. So uh, there are uh, three different uh, things that I, I kind of got out of this. The first was that uh, that Christ is the victor over death uh, and that there is no nothing that we have to fear from it. Uh, the second is that uh, Christ is always with us, no matter what we might face. And the third is that God is always going to give us the strength that we need and the grace that we need to handle whatever we may have. Uh, which of those three uh, do you think has uh, would be the most encouragement to you? Uh, and uh, you write me a comment in the, the section below, and I'd love to, to read it. God bless.